Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about inverse functions uh, and actually define what the inverse is. Okay. What is. So what is the inverse function? Okay. And then we'll look at how to find the inverse of a function. Okay. Um, and then we'll look at uh, how to uh, restrict the domain of an inverse function to make it one-to-one. -one. Okay. So, Yep, this uh, this one to one concept is uh, is 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 going to be used here. Okay, all right. Um, so let's first define what the inverse function is. Okay. So let's suppose right, we have and using a function diagram. Okay, so we have let's call this f. Okay. Right, so remember the function that we have okay, is taking everything in here, which is your domain, and mapping it into the range. Okay, All right. So we're interested in finding the function that goes from this set to this set. Okay, that is right. It's Whatever this is, this becomes your domain now. Okay, so the domain is here because we're starting, right? We're starting in this set and we want to go back to this set. Okay, so we have domain going to range, right? And now we're interested in going from the domain to range, where domain is here, range is here. Okay. So we denote this by f to the minus one. Okay. All right. So just for example, okay, let's say let's say we have okay, let's say there's a point here, or let's say one. Okay. And let's say one uh, gets mapped to two. Okay. So as as we've already learned, right? As you've learned before. Right, this is going to give you your coordinate, right? So this gives us one comma two. Okay, so that's part of your. That's what we what we talked about the relation, right? So, right. So one is related to two here. Okay. So now, right, we're going the other way now. Okay. So now, if we're going this way, okay, so we're saying two, right? We're starting here, and I'm going back to one. So I'll just put arrow, some arrows here, okay? So we're going from two to one now, okay? So that looks like this, right? So two, remember, so it's in your domain for F inverse, and one is in your range for F inverse. So what you notice here, okay? So we get one comma two here, and then we go back the other way, you're getting two comma one. So What's happening is that the x and y values are switched, okay? and that's going to be one of the key insights uh, for finding the inverse of a function. Okay? All right. Okay. So, in order, so we we briefly talked about this before um, when we started out talking about functions, but in order for the inverse to exist. The function, the original function, right, has to be one to one. Okay. So for the inverse to exist, F must be one to one. Okay. So let me remind y'all. Let me remind you what that is. Okay. So, say again, going back to our function diagram. So the idea is that let's say we have let's say we have some numbers here. Let's just call this um, one, two, three, and four, for example. Okay. And over here, let's say we have. Uh, let's say we have 
Okay, minus one, minus two, minus three, okay, actually, it's two, minus three, and minus four. So let's, let's assume that this is what we're given, right? So, so, the, so if we're working, we're, so if we're assuming the function is one to one, then this must be the case, right? Where this one goes to this, this one, this one, and this one, okay? So, again, so if, you, if you're over here, right? So if you're at this, so if you're at this value, the only way you can go back, there's only one bridge if you're standing here to walk back to this point, okay? Or if you're here, you want to get to the other side, then there's only one, right? One bridge, okay, for that for that location. Okay. So that is again, so this is what this is the idea of being one to one. Okay. So let me show you something that's not one to one. Let's do that over here. So this time, let's look at the same set of numbers here. Oh, one, two, three, four. Over here we have minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. Okay. So let's suppose that we have this situation now, okay? So let's say one goes to negative one, and you have two going to minus two, okay? And three is also gonna to go to minus two. And let's say four goes to minus three, okay? So we don't need negative four here, okay? So let's assume that we have this now, okay? Now the issue is, okay, let's say you're, let's say you're here at minus two, okay? So at minus two, you have two options, right? You have two bridges that can go over here. So you have this, you can take, you can walk this way, or you can go this way, okay? To get back to here, right? Okay? Notice over here, you don't have that, right? If you're staying at minus two, then there's only one path, okay? To get to, to get to that, to get to here, okay? Here, again, you have two paths, okay? So anytime you see something like this, okay, uh, it's not one, it's not one to one. Okay? So not one to one. And in fact, right, if you write out the, if you look at the coordinates here, we have two going to minus two and two going to, I'm sorry, two going to minus two and three is going to minus two. So you have, right, okay, so basically you have the same, right, output, right, you have the same output for two different inputs, okay, right, okay, so the reason, so the, the main reason why, okay, the main reason why the function has to be one-to-one -one in order uh, in order for that function to have inverse is because of this, okay? So remember, inverse is going from here to here. So if we, right, so if we're going from here to here, okay? So, right, okay? The problem is, right, that this minus two is going to two and three, okay? So let's, so if you write, if you write out those coordinates, you get minus two comma two and minus two comma three. So we have, so the, the issue is that we have repeating values here, right? Repeating values with two different, two outputs, okay? Two different outputs. And so that violates, that violates the definition of, of a function. So the inverse, right? The inverse of F has to be a function. And clearly that's not the case here, okay? Right, so, okay, so the inverse here, right? So this, is, this would not be a function, okay? So 
not a function. Okay. All right. I'll make that a little bit better so you can see that. Not a function. And you can see that there's there's right. There's two coordinates, right? Minus two goes to two, minus two goes to minus two also goes to three. So that violates the definition of a function. Okay. So that and so in other words, that's why it's important to uh, that's why it's important for the uh, for the function to be one to one. Okay. Um, in order, so that it can have an inverse. Okay. The other, um, okay, so the other thing, okay, the other important part is that if you take, you take the function and compose it with the inverse, okay, remember, so this is taking, this is read as f composed, right, so f composed of f inverse, evaluate at x, okay, so, So F composed of F inverse. So this is basically this. Right? So you're putting, right? So you're putting F inverse, you're putting the inverse function into F. That's what this means. Okay, composition. So by definition, if these are inverses, these are if there's a if these functions. Okay, so if you have the original function and you have its inverse, then this must be equal to X. Likewise, you Take F inverse composed of F, okay? meaning that you're going to put F okay, into, okay, you're going to take F and put it into F inverse. Okay, so F inverse composed of F, that's what that is. So that's going to be equal to X. Okay, so when we first, when we, when I, when I discussed the composition, Okay. I mentioned it wasn't commutative, but this is the only time, okay, this is the only time that uh, where, uh, where F composed of F inverse is going to be equal to F inverse composed of F, and they both give you the value of X. Okay. All right. And let me show you, let me show you something here, okay. Uh, I'll do that through Desmos. Okay, so here on the screen, okay, what you what you're seeing here is that you we have y equals square root of x. That's what you see in uh, blue here, and then you have y equals x cubed, which is the one in red. And and there is the identity function, which is y equals x. That's the hyphenated um, hyphenated line that you see here. Okay, all right, so. If we take, if we pick a point, let's say we know that um, use eight for example, we know that the cube root of eight is two. So I'm going so to put, put in eight comma two. Oh, okay. Wait, that's square root. So I meant to put in. Sorry. X to the one third. All right, there we go. All right, much better. So there is, right? so there's your point eight comma two. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse those. I'm going to reverse the coordinates. So I'm going to say two comma eight, and that's going to be up here. Okay. So what you need to, so what's important here is that if you notice this. Coordinate eight comma two and two comma eight, they are basically. Um, you can get to, if you start at eight comma two, you can take this and reflect it over x, and that gives you two comma eight. So if you put in two right into this function, okay, you get y equals two y equals two cubed, you get eight. You take the cube root of eight, okay, which is what this is, okay, the cube root function. 
You can take the cube root of eight, it gives you two. And so if you do that for every point on this blue, on this blue line, or sorry, blue curve here, if you do that for every point, you take, and if you reflect it over X, it will give you the, the inverse function and vice versa. You take every point on here and switch the, switch the X and Y values, you would get every point on the, on this function here, the blue one, okay? In this case, the cube root of X, okay? So that is, right? So that is why when we take, right? So when we take the composition of F, compose of F inverse, it's gonna give us X. And same thing the other way, if you reverse this, okay? Okay, so this, right, so this is your identity function, right? So at each point in here, can be reflected over y equals x if you get all the points here. In fact, let me show you this. So I'm gonna put in a slider here. Let's start with Q here. Now this is there. We go. There's a a comma a cube. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I say first these. This is going to be. I'm going to make this e cubed on A. Now, look at this. So I reverse these points, okay? As you slide, so I say slide A, it's like slide A, I slide A, okay? Notice that these points moving here, they're constantly symmetric with respect to X. So if you look closely here, right here, you can see that 1.6 comma 4.096, you flip, they flip it around and it puts you here. Okay. It's you on this curve, okay? Okay, so that's, right? So that's the properties of inverse functions. So remember, you're switching the X and Y values. Going back here, okay? So one, two, right? If you're going from here to here, one, two becomes two, one, okay? All right. Okay, so let's, let's go through an example of this. All right, let's say we're given uh, we're given two functions, okay? and we want to verify that those two functions are inverses of each other. Okay, so let's say we have the function one over x plus two, and have another function, one over x minus two. So verify that f and g are inverses of each other. All right. So to do that, we have to check. We have to check these. Okay. All right. So let's first check. Um, let's take f composed of g of x. 
So we're going to, so that means we're going to take, okay, we're going to take g of x and plug that expression into f. All right. Okay, so there's, there's my g of x and there's f. So I'm going to take this, right, so this part right here, this is g of x, and we're going to plug that into this x. Because remember, so f, you're, so you're taking g of x and plugging it into here, right? And that tells you that whatever, um, whatever that is, so this, right, you're going to replace it by x. So you need to do that there as well, okay? All right. So this is going to give us, we have one over, okay, and I'll put that in a different color here. We have one over x minus two here. Okay. And then plus two. Okay, so that is, okay, that's what we have here is this. Again, I took this expression, right, this function, put it into there. So we get one over this plus two, okay? Now, now we just have to simplify it. Okay, so this is equal to one, one over x minus two plus two, okay? One minus two plus two is zero, okay? So we're gonna get one over one over x plus zero. That is equal to one over one over x. Okay, so I'll write it this way. So you get, so this is your main division bar, right? So one over one over x. So one over one over x, okay, that is the same, that is the same as x. In fact, you can you can write it this way. So we take right. So think of this as one over one, okay, and then you do and then you change it to multiplication and it's and then take the reciprocal of this. So you're gonna we end up getting x. Okay. So that that works. Okay. Now we have to check the other first one. Okay. Now we have to check the second one. So we need to take g composed of f. So that means we have g g of f of x. So this time we're going to put f of x. We're going to take f of x and put it into g of x. All right. Okay, so taking this, okay, taking this, and we're going to put that into this x. And then simplify it and see if we see if we get x. All right, so this is going to be one over. And I'll put that in a different color. Okay, so we have one over one divided by x plus two, and then minus two. So you can see it, right? So we have one over x, x is, so that's, that piece is going to x, and then minus two, okay? All right, so now, okay, this is just one over one over x plus two. Um, so take, right, we can flip this around. So it's one over this, which is equal to x plus two, So again, if you you want to see this, this is just think of this just like up here. That's one over one. We get one over one times x plus two over one, and then we have minus two up here. So this is going to give us x plus two minus two, and that's going to give us x. I'll write that a little bit bigger. Okay. 
All right, so both, for both cases, we end up getting X. Which tells us that these, right? This, this tells us that these must be inverses of each other. Okay? So we can say that the inverse of F is this G of X and the inverse of G of X is F of X. That's how that works. So we say, so in math, we say that, that, that these two functions are inverses of each other. All right, um, let's see. Okay, another another thing that I need to mention here is that um, the this notation here, okay, it's important to note, okay, that F inverse of X is not the same thing as this. So this minus one is just a means just the just a general notation for inverse, okay? Uh, not to get confused, okay, with doing something like this. Like if you have x to the minus one, then yes, that's going to be one over x. That's a that's an algebra property, okay? This is right here. You're you're using this kind of you're using this in a different sense, okay? Um, so yeah, there's a so. Um, yeah, so this is just, this right here is just an algebra property, okay? And when you get into, for those of you who plan on taking trig, you're going to be dealing with um, sine, cosine, tangent functions, okay? Um, those functions can also have inverses, okay? So, um, so, which is not the same as, let's say, one over sine of x, okay? One over sine of x is not the same thing as sine inverse of x. So, um so just keep that in mind when you get ready to, um, if you plan on taking trig. Okay. All right. Okay. And I should say not. This is not equal to. Okay. So sorry, forgot to draw the line through that equal sign. So not. Okay. So f inverse of x is not equal to one over x. All right, not the same, not the same idea. Okay. Okay. Let's see. So how do we? So next thing is like okay. So we can verify. Uh, we can verify the. Uh, we can verify that uh, given two functions, we can verify that uh, those are going to be inverses of each other. But how do we actually? So given a function, how do we actually find the? All right, let's go through that. Uh, but keep in mind, right, that for the for the inverse to exist, remember that the function has to be one to one. Okay, so let's go over the next example here. All right. So. All right, so for this example, we're gonna first, um, we're gonna first uh, see if, or verify that the function is one-to-one, -one, okay? Or we can say show that. Okay, we want to show that this function is one to one. And once we do that, then uh, we can go through the process of finding the inverse of that function.
Okay. So let's go through that. Okay. All right. And so in order to do this, remember uh, the main go the main idea is this. Show that this is one to one. What we need to do is we need to say, let's say f of x1 equals to f of x2. Okay. So if we're if this is the case, right, saying the two output values are equal, then if it's one to one, then that implies that this must be true. X1 must be equal to x2. Okay. If you go back, right, so if you go back again to this idea. Here's F inverse, okay? Remember, so we need, if we have something like this, and that has to be one-to-one, -one, okay? So what we're saying here is that if one of, if, if these two, like, let's say, if you have equal values, okay? Let's say two, I'm gonna change this a little bit. Let's say we have, so let's say we have this, okay, and the same y value, the same y value, okay. So if this is the case, right, then, and then from assuming that this function is one to one, then this must be the case, right? So in other words, if you right, so these have the same output, okay. But then when you go back over here, right, x one is not equal to x two, okay. So this would be, for example, let's say this is f of x1 equals to f of x2, right? Okay. And this would be x1 and x2. So in this case, right, when you go, when you go, when we go from here to here, uh, we have x1 different from x2. So, so this would imply this is not one to one. Okay. Right. So, okay, so that's the methodology we're going to use. Okay, so if we start with this assumption, okay, first, if we, if we evaluate this function at x1 and x2, then it better, this better work, okay, um, in order for, if, if that gives us, if that's true, that means this is, uh, that means this function is one to one. Okay. All right, so let's go through that process. Okay, so starting with this side, okay? So we're gonna evaluate the function at x1. So we have two over x1 minus three and plus four equals to two over x2 minus three plus four, okay? So all we did here is just using, right, the, the, the definition of function notation, okay? Here. You're evaluating this function at x1 and then evaluating this function at x2 and setting them equal to each other. Now we now from here we're going to use, we need to simplify this, right? We need to see if we get this form. So uh, we can subtract, right? We can subtract, we can move the four over, okay, go over here. So equals to two over x two minus three. So we have plus four minus four. Okay. So that's going to give us zero. You can see that these just cancel out. Okay. So that's going to leave us with this. Okay. So we have this now. We can cancel, right? We, we can basically cancel out the twos, right? Right. In other words, just divide both sides by two. So this cancels out with this. That leaves us with one over x one minus three equals to one over x two minus three. Okay. Now we can cross multiply these. Okay. So this is going to be x two minus three. 
times one equals to x one minus three times one. And again, the three, the minus three, we can we can add both, we can add three to both sides. So this is going to be x two equal to x one minus three plus three. So we end up getting x two equals to x one, and that's what we wanted to show. So we start off with this. Start off with x1, and x2, but I plugged them in to the function, went through the algebra, and came out with this. So that basically shows us no matter what two points, no matter what two inputs we have, okay, it's always going to be this, right? Those two inputs must be equal to each other. And that shows one to one. All right. Therefore, f of x, this function, must be one to one. Okay. So now let's go through and find the inverse, okay? Since we know this is one to one now. So find the inverse now. Okay, so to do that, we need to, uh, or I'm going to let this be equal to y. Okay, your dependent variable, is, right, this depends on x. Okay. So remember what, what happens, right? So you're going from here to here, right? And so going back from here to here, the roles of x and y are switched, right? One, two, two, one, right? One, two, okay? So the x, right? So in other words, x becomes y, y becomes x. So that's what we're going to do here. Y becomes x, x becomes y. They're interchanging those values, okay? Uh, those variables. And then now we need to figure, now we just, um, we're going to solve for y in terms of x, okay? So that is a topic in 1.1, right? Got to solve for y terms of x, and therefore we end up getting the inverse. Okay, so let's do that. Um, all right, so what we can do here is, and there's various ways to do this, so I'm going to go ahead and um, subtract four, subtract four on both sides. And since I like to work, I like to keep all my variables on the Left hand side, so I'm going to write this way Get 2 over y minus 3. Okay, so that's what we're trying, we're trying to solve for that, and x minus 4. Okay, all right, so now um, we're going to, I'm going to multiply, right, I'm going to multiply both sides by y minus 3. This is what we call clearing out the fraction, okay? So we can write so y minus three, so I can multiply both sides. And then this will give us on this side, because y minus three over y minus three is one. So this becomes two, right? In other words, in other words right, this just cancel, cancels out with that. Just think of this as over one, okay? And then over here, we have x minus four times y minus three. Okay, so we need to multiply all this out. Okay, 2 equals to xy minus 3x minus 4y plus 12. Okay. Okay, again, x times y. Okay. 
Okay. X times minus three, that's minus three X, minus four times Y is minus four Y, and then minus four times negative three right, gives positive 12. So just distribute here, okay? All right, so now what we remember we're trying to solve for y, so we're going to put we're going to put these uh, terms on the other side because that contains the variable that we're trying to solve for. So this is going to be right, minus x y plus four y okay, equals to minus three x plus twelve minus two. So again, I move this one over, that becomes negative. Positive four y, move the two over, minus two, okay? And then we can go ahead and factor out y. This is just 12 minus two, that's gonna give us 10. Okay. Right. And then the last step is to divide both sides by minus x plus four. And there it is, okay? And by the way, this is the same, okay? This is also equal to, because you can um, switch these around, right? So this is the same as 10 minus three X over four minus X. So just flipping these around, okay? And also just to make sure, okay? you can also rewrite this by taking, if you take them, if you take them, the negatives out of both of these. So you have minus 10. That becomes a positive three X. And then the bottom, you can take out the negative. So that becomes minus four plus X. Okay. okay. And so this is equal to negatives cancel out. So that's going to be 3x minus 10 divided by x minus 4. Okay. So there's so it doesn't matter which, you know, they're the same. If you if you have this, that's fine. But I just want want y'all to realize that sometimes if you're checking your answer somewhere, like in the like in the textbook. Uh, it may have this one, it may have this one, or this one, okay? These are all algebraic, all, all algebraically equivalent, okay? All right. Okay, the next topic is... Um, the restricting the domain of inverse function to make it one-to-one. -one. So sometimes like, so we have a function that's right, and we find the inverse and then the result of that, the inverse of that function is not one-to-one. -one. So what do we do in that case? Because when we are talking about inverse, right? So the, the end both, so both functions, the original function and the inverse must be one-to-one, -one, okay? So let's go through an example of that. All right, so find the inverse of two plus square root of x minus four. Okay. All right, so let's uh yeah, so let's um let's go through this. All right, so let's 
let's call this y. This is just y equals to two plus square root of x minus four. And then, so we're going to switch the x and y. So y becomes x and x becomes y. So now, just like on the previous previous example, we need to solve for y. Okay. So I have x minus two. Right? We're gonna bring subtract subtract two on both sides. And we have this. Okay. So now I'm gonna write, like I said, I like the variables. On, I like to work with the variables on the left hand side. Okay. So I'm gonna put this put the y term here. And the x term, so just basically switching it around, so that doesn't change anything. Okay, now how to undo this, right? How we need to solve for y, so what do we have to do to undo the square root? Well, what we have to do is square both sides. Okay, okay. square both sides. Okay, remember this is the same as the same thing as saying y minus four to the one half and then squaring it. So one half when you, right? So when you do this, you multiply these, that gives you one minus y minus four to the power of one. So you end up getting y minus four okay, equals to x minus two squared. Little review on algebra there. Okay. All right. All right. So we get y minus four. Okay. Um, equals to uh, equals to x minus two squared. Okay. So that's just this part was just simplifying this. Okay. All right. Okay. So now one more step. We just need to add four to both sides. So y equals to x minus two squared plus four. Okay. So if you recall, um, remember that parabolas, right? This has a, this contains, this, basically this is a parabola, right? So it's U-shaped. So, and if you remember the, uh, for the, the way to determine or determine a graph or given a graph, the way to determine whether it's one-to-one uh, -one or not is by using the horizontal line test, okay? So this, function, right? It's going to look something like that, okay? So if we do the horizontal line test, okay, uh, it's obviously not going to pass that, right? So this so this function is not one-to-one, -one, okay? So we need to make some modifications. All right. So to do that, let's go back and look at our original function. All right. Let's look at the graph of this. Okay, so this basically is a, it has uh, the square root, okay? The, the base, the parent, the parent function of this is square root, okay? And then, and then it has a transformation here. So you have square root of x minus four. So that means you're, Right, you have the square root, you're shifting the square root function four units to the right. And then, okay, because remember, this is a horizontal shift, and then you're adding two. So it's going to be a vertical shift of two units. Okay. All right. So, so we're going to end up getting the, so one, two, three, four. Hence, we're shifting the square root function over four units. Okay. And then shifting it up two units. Okay. So that's going to be one, two. So this oh, it's going to look something like this. Just in general. Okay, for that one. Okay, so notice if I plug in four, I get zero. Zero plus two is two. Okay. Now let's look at the other one. Okay, we have x minus two squared plus four. Okay. So that basically, 
Okay, it's going to look something like this. Okay, so what we can do is we we'll get we're going to get to more we're going to talk a little bit more about parabolas later on in chapter two. But in the meantime, what we can do is we can pick um, we can pick some points. So let's say x is zero. When x is zero, okay, um, you're going to get minus two squared, which is four, and then plus four. Okay, so right, so that's going to give us. I go through this, and then. Uh, we can pick also, I chose, let's say, two. Let's say pick something a little bit easier. Let's say two. So two is so two. When x is two, this is zero. And then four. So, and then it's going to go through, right? And then when x is zero, it's going to go through eight. So let's put that up here somewhere. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So it's going to do something like this. Then go back down. It's going to... All right. So something like that. Okay. So basically, the, the important part here is we. We're getting that parabola shape. And then let's go ahead and put in y equals x. Okay, so here's the issue that we have. Remember, so we have this, right? That's what we're trying to find the inverse of. So if we take this and reflect it over X, we're not gonna get this whole part, okay? Okay. So in fact, what we, okay? In fact, we're only gonna get this part here, here, okay? In fact, let me put my, let's put the coordinate there. So remember, this was at four comma two, right? Right here, this was at two comma four. Right. So we need to make we need to, to make some modifications here to our to the uh, to to this. Okay. This is not quite the inverse yet. So let's go again. Let's go back to the original function. So based on so based on what you see here, right? The domain. Take a look at the domain. Domain is going to be, right? But based on what you see here, right, the domain is going to be from four to infinity. Okay, so here's the value four. And, okay, okay here's the value. Oh, sorry, domain is from four to infinity. Yeah, that's correct. Um, yeah, for, for this one. So for this function, sorry, looking over this one. So for this one, right? So the domain is going to start four and go to infinity, right? Okay. And then the range for f of x. Okay, so this being the f of x. The range is going to be from, okay, to to infinity, okay, right, so two, right, so what, the y by is two, and this continues to increase, okay, continues, the y by continues to grow, all right, so we're going from two to infinity, now let's go back to this function, okay, remember, okay, so This is F, right? This is your domain. This is your range, okay? There's F inverse, your domain and range. So we know we know the domain and range for the original function. So therefore, the domain, okay? So for the domain of F inverse has to be 
the range, right? So it has to be right this one. So going from two, okay, from two to infinity. I'll write that out. And then the range, okay. So remember the range, the domain becomes the range and the for F inverse and the okay, and, and the domain becomes range for this one. So the range is going to be whatever the domain of was here, which is from four to infinity. Okay, look at that. So that tells us, right? So what this is telling us is that we don't need, we don't, we don't want this whole part. Okay, so the domain, okay, so first of all, the domain is gonna be for this function, right? It's gonna be from two to infinity. So we can go ahead and take that part out. Then that leaves us with the range, right? So here's y by four to infinity. So there it is. So that's essentially what we need. So, right? So our, okay, so our F inverse, F inverse is this, inverse function of this one, and with the domain. So we need to state the domain and the range is here. Okay, so um, so we only need to state, so it's it's good enough to only state this part, okay, the domain. So these two, right, these two have to go together. So if you don't have, right, so if you don't state the domain, then this technically is not uh, one, it's not one to one. Okay, so now by, so by, right, by, so this is what's called restricting the domain for the F in, for, for the inverse function. By restricting the domain, now you can see that becomes one to one. So both of these are, right, so both of these you can see are one to one. Therefore, they're inverses of each other. That's how that works. Okay? Very important, very important if you're going to count this. Um, there's some uh, there's some other interesting properties here also um, that's um, that, that y'all would that you um, that you will learn in calculus in calculus one. All right. Um, so yeah. So um, I think that's all for now. Okay. So make sure you know make sure you can you, you can solve this kind of problem where. You're given the function and uh, you need to find the inverse, but then you need to figure out the domain range of the original. So that way you can use that information to figure out the domain range of the, of the inverse function so that you can do your restriction. All right, so uh, I think that's it. So I will stop here and then see you all next time.